And how would you summarize why men are in crisis now? I think it's because in, in a deep level, the West has lost faith in the idea of masculinity. Now, that's no different than the death of God. It's the same thing. And so, and Nietzsche knew what the consequence of that would be. I mean, that's most of what he wrote about, you know, and, and so you'd say, well, the divine symbol of masculinity has been obliterated. Well, so then what do you expect? What it, what's going to happen? It's going to, that means masculinity is going to become weak. And especially if the symbol is also denigrated, right, which, which it definitely is. So what that means is that the ideal that man could aspire to is denigrated. And well, then with your ideal in tatters, you're weak. That's, that's definitional. So I think the reason that men have been responding positively to my, my thinking, let's say, is that I don't buy any of that. I like the masculine spirit. It's necessary and it's not fundamentally carnage and pillaging. It's not fundamentally rape culture. You know, it's not fundamentally world destroying. And all of those things have been, all of those aspersions have been cast upon it. That's partly the guilt of Western society for technological progress even. And those are reasonable challenges to be set before men. But they're not reasonable accusations to swallow without criticism. What is a masculinity we can aspire to? Well, it's responsibility fundamentally. And, and it's, it's, it's to, to put it symbolically, is that your, your responsibility is to incarnate the spirit of the Logos. That's your responsibility. That's your role in life. And that is independent to some degree in whether or not you accept the idea of a transcendent and eternal reality. Now, I'm not making a case for that or against that. I, those things are beyond human understanding. But we know what happens if people act poorly, if men act badly. We know what happens. We know that the world turns into something that's so close to hell that the difference is trivial. We know that. That's the story of the 20th century. So we should learn that lesson. And what that lesson is, is pick up the world on your shoulders and walk forward. Pick up the world with all of its trouble, with all of its suffering, with all of its evil, and move forward with it. And in bearing that burden, learn that you're the sort of creature that can bear that burden and therefore deserving of respect. That's, that's, the, that's identification with the Logos. And that's, I don't, I've never encountered an, an idea that's better than that because it's not, it's so not naive. It's the opposite of naive. It's like there's terrible evil and there's terrible suffering. It's bottomless. But, the human spirit is capable of voluntarily taking that on as a challenge. Well, it's worth a try. And that's where we get meaning. Yes, exactly. That's, 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 that's the positive meaning. That's the positive meaning. That's the world-affirming meaning, you know, and that, that's, that's self-esteem, let's say, you know, which is very poorly characterized. It's very shallowly characterized, because it usually doesn't involve any sense of responsibility. But, you know, it's obvious, if you, it's obvious in some ways. If you look at the people that other people spontaneously respect, unless they become unbelievably cynical, it's the people who adopt responsibility and deal with it competently. So, it's not a mystery that that would be what you could aspire to. Now, it, it gets undermined if you feel that that force of responsibility is the, the raping and pillaging patriarchal culture that's despoiling the natural environment and that's equivalent to a cancer. Well, you know, no. I don't buy that.